How to set up a trust fall. Want to learn what it really means to put your faith in someone else? Try trust fall, where one person falls backward depending upon another to catch them. You will need two or more people and trust. Optional, an elevated platform. Step one, instruct the person who will fall to stand with their eyes shut and their hands folded across their chest. Step two, position the person who will catch, the spotter, behind the person who will fall. The spotter must be close enough to catch the faller, but far enough away that the faller has adequate falling space. Step three, instruct the faller to keep their body straight and stiff and to lean back on their heels, allowing themselves to fall into the arms of the spotter. As faller and spotter get more comfortable, experiment with increasing the distance between the spotter and faller. Step four, if you have more people participating, Position several to surround the faller. Spotters stand in a semicircle around the back of the faller to catch them. Step 5. Stage a trust fall from an elevated platform, such as a step stool, tree stump, or riser. Spotters face each other and link hands. The faller falls into the net of arms. Practice an elevated trust fall only under the supervision of an experienced trust fall leader. Step 6. Think about how this exercise makes you feel once you and your adrenaline level have fallen. The object is to become more trusting and confident. Did you know? Trust falls are often used as corporate exercises to promote team building. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Awesome. All right, we need a volunteer for a trust fall. Anybody want to? Nobody? <laughs> okay. All right, anybody ever done a trust fall before? Okay, if you didn't know what a trust fall was, this video obviously did a perfect job of explaining it. Um, obviously, as you saw, a trust fall is all about building uh, trust and, and uh, you know, camaraderie and just trust in other people. So um, it's always fun if you ever have done a trust fall. It's fun to be the catcher. It's not fun to be the person that's actually doing the falling. You know, because it, it's always that, that tingly, weird feeling of like, can I really trust that person? Are they really going to catch me? Uh, I've done it a few times. I've always been caught, you know, thank God. And uh, um, I watched some of the videos online where it was like a trust fall fail, where people like were literally standing at the rooftop of a, of a home, and then they fell down like a group of people, and they fell right through them, you know. And I thought of showing that video, but it was just a little too much. So we went with this one. But um, so trust fall. This morning, um, I want to talk about about trust, trusting God. Like, how do we trust God? What is trusting God all about? And I want to read, and we'll look at a passage in, in Proverbs 3. It's probably a passage that we've heard many times. It's probably like one of those verses that we all kind of know, but I think it's one of those verses that when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, do we really know, do we really know how to trust God? And that's really what I want to talk to you about this morning. Um, I have a son, and I'm sure everybody here knows Jordan, right? Anybody know Jordan? Yeah, he's the best, man. He's, he's my son. So my son is about, he's almost going to be two years old in about two weeks. And, uh, and he's just at that age, yeah, where he just loves to wrestle and everything. And the cool thing is that Jordan trusts me 100% completely. You know what I mean? Like he just like, when we wrestle, like he just jumps on me. He'll leap on me. He'll like, you know, we do this crazy thing where he'll stand on my shoulders and I hold him like this and I walk around the house and I drop him on the bed and all that stuff. How many people here want to stand on my shoulders? It, nobody, because we, you know, I don't want you standing on my shoulders, put it that way. But, you know, he trusts me completely. And I think the reason he trusts me completely is because he's only, you know, going to be two years old. And what has he really experienced? He hasn't really experienced any uh, pain or disappointment and I think that where our trust issues come in, when we stop trusting in, in people or stop trusting in God or things, is because I think that the experiences we have in life, the, the pains of life, start to have us, cause us to put up walls where we say, you know what, I'm not going to trust anymore. And actually, just yesterday, um, we were, my son loves it for some reason when I change the filters in the house. And he loves get, like climbing up on ladders. So he's been asking for, for days, like, Daddy, change filters? Change. So finally yesterday, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pretend to change filters. So I'm like, you want to change filters? He was so excited. He was like, change filters. You know? I got the ladder, and he was like, I get the ladder. And you know, So we're in his room, and he wanted to climb up the ladder, which you know, I'm, I'm right behind him you know, and everything, and just making sure he's safe. But somehow he pinched his leg between the second step and the first step. I don't even know how he did it. But he went to stand up, and his leg got caught. And all of a sudden, he lets out this big scream, 
and he has a huge bruise on his leg. So somehow he caught his leg on there, and he really hurt himself. But you know what? All of a sudden, he didn't want to go up on the ladder anymore. You know, and that's kind of what happens to us. I think that we trust people. We, we, we kind of like are born with being able to trust, but then something happens. Either our heart's broken by somebody. You know, maybe you had a job that you thought you were secure, and all of a sudden, they let you go. And there's stuff happens in life where all of a sudden, it's like, I thought I could trust, but things happen. All of a sudden, we're like, you know what? Just kind of like him in that ladder. I'm not sure I can trust that anymore. Um, and, and I think that when it comes to God... God wants us to have the same kind of trust that like Jordan has with me, like a child has with his father. I think God wants us to completely trust him. But because of life and the mistrust that we have, unfortunately, when it comes to our relationship with God, it looks a whole lot more like the trust fall where we put our leg back and we say, you know what, I'm not sure I can fully trust you, God. So this morning, I just want to look at a couple of things, a few things that you know, I, me as a pastor and just kind of talking to people and, and you kind of hear these things over and over again, some of the, the reasons why people have trust issues. I'm going to look at a few things that kind of hinder us from trusting God and then I want to look at what the Bible actually says about that and hopefully you can kind of turn our minds around and, and realize that we really can trust God. Well, I want to look at, hold on, I'm, I'm in charge of the clicker today and I'm not good with it. Look at that, that's my graphic. All right, Proverbs 3, it says this. Here's the verse that I want to kind of base everything off of. I'm sure we've heard this verse before. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everybody say, all your heart. All your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That's kind of want to base this thing on, and we're going to come back to this verse. But let's look at some of the, some of the reasons that people say, you know what, I have, I have just some issues trusting with God. Uh, the first thing is somebody might be asking, maybe God doesn't care about me. And you hear this kind of stuff a lot where it's like, you know, I think God maybe doesn't care about me, all the bad stuff that happens to me. I think that's God. He's just trying to, you know, cause me pain. Or, or if God really cared about me, he would help me. I'm not sure I can trust him because I just don't ultimately believe that God actually truly cares about me. And I think as long as we have that mindset that thinks that God doesn't care about me, then we'll never be able to truly say, God, I trust you. How can we trust somebody, or how can we trust anybody who, if we don't think that person actually has the best interest in mind for us? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Why would I trust someone if I didn't think they actually cared about me? So what does the Bible have to say about God actually caring about us? Let's look at uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Give all of your worries and cares to God, because he cares about you. I mean, that's just plain and simple right there. Peter makes it very clear, and he says, give all of your words and your cares to God. Why? Because God cares about you. You know, we, we can't keep thinking that God just doesn't care. The Bible makes it clear he actually cares about you. He cares so much about every single detail of your life. But I love that the Bible actually takes it a step further. When Jesus came to this earth, and we've got to understand that in the Old Testament, God was God. He was Lord. He was sovereign, and he was his big God. And, and there was a little bit of like, like fear, and everybody tried to obey the commandments, and, and, and they kind of viewed God as just a God of judgment and everything. But when Jesus comes along, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus actually takes this new concept and says, God is not just God, Almighty God, but he's literally Father. And that was like revolutionary. That was like People had, didn't understand this. And Jesus comes and says, he's not just God, who's this distant God, but he is literally Father. We can call him Father. Let's see what Jesus says in, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 30 through 32. We're going to read this. It says, and if God, this is Jesus talking, if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers, for flowers out in the field that are here today and are gone tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear? Just the everyday stuff, just the constant concerns about everyday life stuff. Check it out. He said, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. These things dominate the thoughts of people who do not know the Lord. He says, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And I think this is awesome that, that he doesn't just say, you know what, my heavenly Father knows all your needs. He says, your heavenly Father we got to understand that God is a father, but he's not just father somewhere. He is your heavenly father. Understand that he loves you and he cares about you so much. He is your heavenly father. 
And then uh, Matthew chapter 6, a little bit before that, I want to read this to, uh, this is again Jesus talking and teaching people about prayer, about how to approach God. He says, don't be like them. And what he was referring to here was talking about people of other religions. Right before this, he was talking about people of other religions. He said, they just kind of babble on and on in prayer, and they hopefully think that their many words will be heard by somebody or something. He says, listen, don't be like that. For your Father, God the Father, knows what you need before you even ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name just simply means, God, your name is holy. Holy is your name. And he's saying, when you pray, don't just pray and think, well, maybe my prayers are heard. I'm just going to give a whole bunch of words, and, and, and hopefully somebody will hear it or something. No, he's saying, listen, when you pray, you go to your Father. You approach your Father. Man, if we just truly understood that God is a Father and, 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 and understood his heart. Again, I want to use my son as a reference. You know, when... My son loves me tremendously, but the love that I have for him, I can't even begin to describe it. The love, I didn't know that until I had a son. You know, you always imagine what's it going to be like when you're a father, you don't really know. But man, once that child is born, you're like, there is a love that somehow is broken in, that just opens up on the inside of you, and you're like, I have this unconditional love for him. You know what, it doesn't even matter if I'm in my office practicing guitar or if I'm preparing for a, you know, a message or whatever. If that office door flies open and he comes walking in with his little diaper on and the little sandals that he put on himself and he comes marching in and he's like, Daddy, Daddy, and he starts climbing up on my desk. I don't care what I'm doing. I will stop give him my full attention. Why? Because I love him so much. I the whole world can stop because I'm all about him. And we got to understand that God is the same way. The Bible says that we can walk boldly into the throne room of grace. You know what that means? We can literally kick open the throne room of grace, the door, and say, God, I'm here. I'm coming in. And God will say, you know what? My son, my, ch my daughter, come on here. I want to hear from you. If we, if we constantly think that God is some distant God sitting on a throne like an old man, and, and maybe he cares, maybe he hears or not. Man, if we understood that God was at the very edge of his seat, just saying, I can't wait for you to come to me and talk to me because I love you that much. I want to read the same uh, verse out of the Message Bible, and I think it's just a cool way of describing it. It says, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what they want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this, our Father in heaven. I just love what it says, that with a, with a God like this loving you. Let's just understand that God is a father, and he loves us so much that we can just approach him and say, Father, Dad, I have a problem. I, I have a need. I'm coming to you. And we can trust that he actually, truly cares. So what's another thing? What's another reason that people might say, I have, I have trust issues. I'm not sure if I can trust God. Uh, some people say, maybe God won't help me this time. You know, it's something that I used to think too when I, I you know, first started walking with the Lord. You're kind of, you feel like, all right, you know, how many wishes do I actually have with God? Kind of like a genie, you know, you're like you rub that bottle and the genie comes out and you have like three wishes. You're like, all right, I better make them good. You know, I only got three and I, I want to make sure I ask the right things. But God doesn't work that way. He's not like, all right, you asked me one too many times. God constantly wants to hear from us. His mercies and grace are new every morning. Check it out. It says, the faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. His mercies, they never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. His mercies are new every day. And sometimes we think like, you know, am I wearing God down with my prayers? Am I wearing God down with all my requests? Am I, you know, have I approached him too many times? Um, you know, is he sick of me? Is he, is he getting mad at me? You know, anybody ever ask somebody for help and they help you and then you forget how to do that thing? You have to go back and ask them again and then you kind of feel like, are they going to get mad at me? I'm kind of like that with technology. Anybody else? All right, like sometimes I call my brother, you know, or I'll call somebody and be like, all right, I, I can't figure this thing out, and they kind of walk me through it. And then like a month later, I'm back at the same thing, and I'm like, how did I do that again? <laughs> you know, and I got to call that person again, and I kind of feel like, man, they're going to get mad at me. They're kind of like, don't you get it already? I explained it to you, you know, like, like uh, you're kind of wasting my time. And you feel that way. you kind of like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm kind of maybe taking advantage of their time. But we can't think the same way with God. God is so patient and so loving. We can go to him a million times and say, God, I need your help again. God, I'm coming to you again. And God will say, I'm right here. I'm ready to help. Every day my, my mercies are new. His faithfulness is new. And 
You know, something I used to think too is that, uh, you know, kind of like God helped me once, but now I'm facing a similar situation again, and I'm not sure if God will deliver me a second time around. You, anybody ever feel like that? You, you feel like, okay, God, he helped me here, but then like something happens again, and you're like, okay, he helped me once, but will he help me again? Like, I'm not quite sure, can I trust God to come through again kind of a thing? And um, in 2 Corinthians 1.10, it says this, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril. This is, this is uh, Paul talking about a missionary journey that he had um, in, in, in Asia, and he was talking about this. Actually, you know what? I want to read. Let me read the whole thing here because I feel like somebody needs to hear this. Let me just read the, 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 kind of like the whole passage here, what, what, what Paul is talking about. Um, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and he's telling them about uh, a missions trip that he did in Asia. And he's telling them about it, and this is what he says. He says, I think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. So when he was on his missionary journey in Asia, preaching the gospel, setting up churches, he said, we were crushed and completely overwhelmed, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. Anybody ever been in a place that you're just completely overwhelmed and you just can't even think that you, you can even make it another day? I mean, I've been there. You know, like you come to a place where you're like, I just don't even know if I can go on. Like you're kind of, you, and, you, and you're trusting God and you're kind of like walking and you're like, I don't even know how I'm going to get through this. And you feel completely crushed and overwhelmed by the situation. And Paul is saying we were at a point that we were literally facing death and we were so completely crushed and overwhelmed with what was happening, we thought we were going to die. I mean, they're at the very point. This is the Apostle Paul, who is probably like one of the greatest missionaries, apostles that ever lived. I mean, you know, over a third of the New Testament that we have was written by him. This was such a great man of God who was doing such amazing things for God. And yet he says that he was at a point where he was literally facing death, and they had no idea if God would actually deliver them or not. He came to that point, and I love what he says next. He says, in fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we learn not to rely on ourselves, but on God who can raise the dead. I believe that sometimes God will allow us to even to reach a point of absolute, utter helplessness, but we were like, you know what, I have to absolutely depend on God. And I think the reason he does it, it's not that he can show off, but he does it so that we realize how much we actually need him. And, and Paul goes on and he says this, the result of, of him coming to this point, he says, as a result, we learn not to rely on ourselves, but on God who can raise the dead. And then he says this, and he did deliver us from mortal danger, and we are confident that he will continue to deliver us. And I think that God brings us to a point sometimes where we literally are like, you know what? I have no idea what the next step is. I am at an absolute point of like, I feel like I'm going to die. I feel like I'm completely crushed by this. I have no clue what the next step is. And God will allow us to come to that very point because it's in that very moment that we actually say, you know what, God? I surrender completely to you. And I think the reason that he does that is just like Paul said, as a result, they learn they can trust in God. And notice the language that Paul used. He used this language. He says, and he did deliver us. And we are confident that he will continue to deliver us. I think when God brings you to that point and he delivers you from something so impossible, so like, you know, out of a place when you're just like, I don't even know how to go on, and God delivers you from that, your language begins to change. When you're faced with another situation, all of a sudden you kind of, you don't sit there and go, I wonder if God, you're going to be like Paul and you're going to say, I am confident that he will do this thing again. Um, you know, my wife and I, we, we were uh, trying to, to get pregnant for a, a long time. Actually, it was years. And it just kind of like, it just never happened. It never happened. It never happened. And all kinds of, you know, doubts come into your head. And you're just like, God, are you going to, you going to come through on this, you know? And it was like, we just, she was just, we were just talking about this message. And she was just sharing with me, you know, her own feelings in that point. And she says she remembers literally coming to a point where she was, she was trying to figure it all out and why is this happening and why is it not working and this and that, where she literally came to a point 
where it was like so hopeless. We're like, I don't think this is ever going to happen. Maybe it's not meant for us or whatever it is. But we were just trusting God, trusting God, trusting God. But month after month after month, it was like a disappointment. But we were just continuing to trust God. And she said she literally came to a point where she said, you know what? I stopped trying to figure it out. I stopped trying to like make it all in my head of how it's all going to you know, happen. And she said, God, I trust you completely. I'm just going to surrender this thing over to you. It was that very month that we got pregnant. You know, I think that God will just want us to come to a place where we say, you know what, God, I surrender it completely to you. And in that moment, I think God will just act. And now it was like, you know what, we, we can tell people, you can trust God for this. You know, it just, you, you, your, your language changes, your confidence in God changes. Another reason, another reason that people might say, I have trouble trusting in God. Uh, it says, maybe this problem is too big for God. You know, maybe this problem that I'm facing, God just can't handle. Maybe I, I, I'm, I'm going through something, and it's just too big for God. Um, I have one verse. It says, for with God, nothing is ever or ever shall be impossible. Luke 137. This is Jesus talking. There is nothing that's impossible for God. And we got to get that through our mind that, that, you know, we may be facing things that, that seem extremely large. And I'm not trying to, like, downgrade it or, or say that our, our situation or problems aren't, uh, troublesome and whatever, but if we truly understood how big and great and awesome God is, that there's nothing impossible for him, then no matter what our problem is, we can truly turn to him and trust him. But as long as we keep blowing up our problems really big, then guess what? We're making God really small. But if we turn the other way around and say, God, I look to you and start making him big, then our problems become really small. That's why it's so important to get into the word of God. That's why it's so important that we read the Bible because when I read the Bible, that's when I start to understand what God has done. You know, I read the Bible from Genesis, and I see that God created um, everything in six days. God just spoke it, and everything happened. Everything, the entire world, uh, uh, people, animals, the plant, everything, he just breathed it into existence, and it happened in six days. You know, you read how, how God delivered an entire nation out of slavery, and God split the sea open. They walked through dry ground. You know, you, you see how God spoke to a man named Abraham and his wife Sarah who never had children. And he waited till they're 100 years old when it was way past, you know, childbearing age. And he said, guess what? You're going to be a father of many nations. You're going to have children and, and your descendants will be like the stars. You can't even count them. It's like, that is so impossible, God. How can that even be? We're, we're way too old. And God's like, why are you laughing at me? There's nothing that's impossible. You know, you read about the, the, the prophets where uh, the, the armies were, God says, you know what, dwindle your army down to about 300 people and you're going to face thousands and God goes and fights for them. You know, you, you read about Jesus when he walks the earth and there were people that uh, were blind from birth and he allowed them to see, he touched them, he healed them. And Jesus was nailed to a cross and murdered on a cross and three days later he rose from the dead. And he was like, God, God's like, there's nothing impossible for me. But yet we have trouble believing God for like a job search. You know, like we have trouble believing God for, for maybe our finance or our children, our marriage, whatever it is. But it's so important to get into the word of God and, and to really see all the things that God has done because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more time you spend in the Bible, you're kind of like, man, faith is rising up in the inside of me. And I begin to realize no matter what I'm going through, God is bigger than my problem. Amen? I mean, God is so much bigger. So um, let's look at Proverbs 3. Verse 5, I want to kind of look at this. So we, we kind of looked at some things and say, you know, maybe these are some of the doubts, but how do I actually trust in God? Like, how do I, how do, I do that? How do I actually trust God? Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Number one, choose to trust God. Um, trust in God, I think it comes down to just a choice. You have a choice to trust God or not to trust him. And it just comes down to a simple choice because, honestly, I think we have two choices. Either I can trust him or I can choose to hang on to all of my worries and all of my anxieties. And, and you know, it's a choice. We have to honestly just say, God, I choose to trust you. And if we don't turn that over, man, you're going to be tossing and turning in your bed and you're going to be like, you know, anybody ever been there? Man, I've, I've been there where you're laying there at night and you're, you're, you're thinking of your problems, you're thinking about them. But God says, just as we said, he cares about you. Just give me your problems. Turn them over. And it's a choice. And honestly, it is like a day-by-day -day choice. Sometimes it's an hour-by-hour. -hour. Sometimes a minute-by-minute. -minute. Those thoughts are going to creep in. You're like, you know what? No, I'm going I'm to choose to trust God. I'm choosing to trust God. It's a choice to trust him. Uh, number two, he says, lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Lean not on your own understanding. I think this is one of the biggest hiccups that we have as people. 
I think one of the biggest things that hinder us from trusting God is right here. I think sometimes our faith only rises to about this level right here because our mind just like, you know, takes over and, and we're like, you know what, I want to trust God, but I'm trying to figure this whole thing out on my own and, you know, the wheels are spinning. Um, number two, trusting God is, is in faith. You trust God in faith. It takes faith to trust God. And as long as we're trying to figure things out on our own, we haven't truly surrendered it. And if you're laying there at night or if you're constantly worrying about it, that's really a test to say, did I actually surrender this thing to God or not? If you're constantly worrying about it, that means I haven't surrendered it over to the Lord. But trying to figure it out on your own, it's just not going to work. It's just not worth trying to, to figure out every point and, and you know, how is this thing going to work. Now, I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm going to completely trust the Lord. Um, it says, seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Number three, trust God by putting him first. Um, trust God by putting him first. You know, this is not a time that we should run from God. When we're facing something, we're facing situations or problems, we're trying to trust in God. It's not a time that we should be running from him. It's not a time that we should uh, turn away. And, and, and you see this so many times where people are going through something, and all of a sudden they stop coming to church. And you're like, man, if they would just realize that, if, if they would just seek God first. And I know that doesn't make sense sometimes. You're like, I'm trying to like figure things out. I'm trying to get my life in order. I mean, if we just put God first and realize that by putting him first, everything would fall into place. I remember that um, when I was living somewhere else, and I, I moved back here to Naples. I just felt like God was telling me to move back to Naples. And I moved here, and I thought I had a job lined up. It didn't work out. And I only had so much money that I had on me, you know, I'm, I was young, just out of college, but how much money do I really have, you know, and I had some savings, but it was like I blew through my savings, I'm like, I can't find a job anywhere, I'm like, God, I really thought you had me here, I'm like, I don't understand, and I just remember God telling me, like, go to church tonight, it was like a Wednesday night service, I'm like, I don't feel like going to church, you know, I feel like packing up, going back to my parents, I'm moving back home, you know, which is not fun when you're, you're like, I'm not going back home. But yeah, just at a point where like, God, I thought you told me to come here. Nothing's working out. And I felt like I was like, continue to put me first. It's like, go to church tonight. And I'm like, I don't even know what the point of that, but I'll go to church tonight. And I went up for prayer that night and I met a guy named Rick who was praying for me. And he said, oh, you need a job? I'll give you a job. And it was like, right there, I had someone. And it just like, from there, just began to snowball um, just ministry and everything else that, that I started going to. It's like, Again, sometimes God will bring us to a point and where we truly have to trust him and we have to make up our minds that I'm going to trust you, but always, always put him first. Uh, acknowledging him in everything that we do. And um, really, that's kind of like the whole message I want to give you guys this morning. And I want to leave you guys with this one thought. Again, going back to, to my son and what my son, how much he trusts me. And there's something that my son will say all the time. You hear it around our house and I appreciate what he says. I don't think it's necessarily true, but to him it is. But he always says, Daddy will fix it. You know, if he only knew my limitations, if he only knew the things that I cannot do, but everything is, Daddy fix it. Daddy will fix it. You know, he'll fix it. Because he thinks that I'm just the greatest thing. He thinks that I can just absolutely fix anything, which is true, <laughs> sort of, you know. But man, if we understood the same thing about God, like let's get back to a place where we say, you know what, my dad, my heavenly father can fix it. No matter what the problem I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I mean, let's have the same heart, the same attitude that my little son has. Like let's go back to a place where we just gaze at God and say, God, you know what, I truly believe you can do all things. My daddy, he can fix it. No matter what, he can fix it. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, um, God, we just uh, come before you right now, Father. And Father, I just, I know that you know every heart in here, Father, everything that people are going through. God, you know the concerns, Father. You know the troubles, the worries, the anxieties that people have brought here this morning. And Father, this morning, God, we, we choose to trust you. God, we choose to come before you, God, and give you a whole heart. Father, we want to stop trusting in our own abilities and leaning on our own understanding. But we want to come back to a place, God, where we say, God, I trust you. God, we want to come to a place where we say, my heavenly Father, he's got it, and he can fix it. 
So, Father, right now, God, as, as, as people are sitting there, and I know that their problem probably right now is nagging at them. And you know what you're thinking right now, all the stuff that's going on in your life. God, I pray that they have the courage and the faith right now to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to choose to turn this thing over to you. I'm going to choose to trust you. I'm going to stop trying to figure this thing out on my own. And I'm going to choose to trust you, God. And God, I thank you that you're going to come through strong, Father God. You will deliver them. God, you have delivered people in the past. You will continue to deliver them. And I thank you, God, as you deliver us, as you come through and and just bring us out of the pits, God, bring us out of these situations, that our language begin to change and we say confidently, our God will continue to deliver us. I can trust in him. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are a loving Father and you are so eager to hear from us. God, thank you that you're not some distant God who who doesn't care or is not interested in every part of our lives, but you truly care. And you desire, God, that we come to you and give it all to you. God, we love you. We love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you.